following was filmed on Planet Reba. Hi, this is Jackie McQuaid, and this is P.E. TV. Now, if you're like me, a big sports nut, but you know you're probably never going to be a professional athlete, stick around. I'm going to show you how you can take your passion for sports and turn it into a fulfilling and satisfying career. Hey, welcome to a special edition of PETV. Today we're going to check out some cool people who have managed to make careers out of their love for sports and fitness. And that's not particularly uncommon, but what Matt neglected to mention is that today's guest, none of them is a professional athlete. That's right, Danny, but they sure are professional at what they do. They're going to give us some insightful information on the careers they've chosen and how to get started. There are a myriad of ways in which you can turn sports, health, and fitness into a career. You can be a sports announcer, a fitness trainer, a PE teacher, or a team trainer. And hey, let's not forget the people who design the golf courses, who build the stadiums, or who sell the tickets to the events. You can also specialize in sports and fitness as a TV producer, a doctor, a photographer, or even a clothing manufacturer. That's right, the options are endless, which is good because most of us probably won't be going pro or participating in the Olympics. That's right, Jose. <laughs> That's right. Stick around, guys, because we're going to give you the inside scoop on several careers that just may be in your future. Hi, I'm Leslie Visser, and I'm a sportscaster with ABC and ESPN. Thank you, Brent. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, John. Chelsea. I was a sports fan from the time I was about 9 or 10 years old. I remember I read Sports Illustrated when I was in the third grade. My brother was furious. I was always stealing it from the mailbox. So I was one of those kids that just loved box scores, loved all sports. And I was really lucky. I wrote for my college paper. And then I won a Carnegie Foundation grant, which entitled me to work at any newspaper in the country. And I went to the Boston Globe, which had the best sports section. And then uh, after about 10 years, I was hired by CBS. So I've been, I've had really fortunate breaks along the way. I remember I was so stiff at first. If, if you, any of you remember me from that, you will recall that. I just remember thinking, oh God, I hope this gets better. I've covered uh, 15 Wimbledons, 10 World Series, probably 10 or 12 Super Bowls. I do primarily the NFL. Brett is not 100%. He told me a couple of minutes ago he's more like 80%. And I do the Triple Crown. Let's go to Leslie Visser. Al, a slightly dejected Corey Nakatani, a beautiful race. You, you had the lead. What happened? I did the World Figure Skating for ABC. Julie, I'm with the new symbol of American skating, a very more nervous than you were during the competition. What does this mean to you, Nicole? Also, the U.S. Figure Skating and the Pro Bowl. I think it's great if you've been an athlete or if you've participated in sports. I mean, it probably helps if you understand a sprained ankle or if you can empathize with someone who's torn his rotator cuff. But I don't think it's the most important thing. I think that what's most important is that do you ask the right questions? Do you have a judgment for what you're seeing? Can you express yourself? I mean, there are a lot of athletes who haven't made it as broadcasters because they can't communicate. So it's more important that you have knowledge and the ability to communicate. Um, here's a little secret of mine. Make every meeting with every single person you meet in sports count. Because you'd be surprised how many people 10 and 15 years down the road go on to be the public relations director of a major team or the coach or the GM or the owner. So you, you just don't know. So make every meeting count. If you're a young woman who thinks that you might be interested in becoming a broadcaster, I would say the most vital thing for you to do is watch games by yourself with the sound turned down. It is so important that you don't just take the interpretation of the analyst or the play-by-play. -play. It's really important that you see it for yourself. And you must be able to turn to someone, to your producer, to the public, and say, this is why the Bulls beat the Knicks. Do you see them go from man-to-man to, man to zone? And this is why Houston won the championship last year. Do you see the safety blitz in football? If you have knowledge you will have a job. My name's Clem Jackson, and I am a hurdles specialist coach. The best thing about my job, my career, uh, and I've done a lot of things, but the best thing about this, being a coach and manager of athletes, is I'm outside, I'm exercising, I'm happy, I'm in the sunshine. 
Well, if you're in middle school, grade school, the best way to prepare at this point is to watch and learn as much as you possibly can and ask a lot of questions. Ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. You study, ask of your coaches, watch them, watch all the coaches you possibly see. When you get into the higher learning uh, education, you get into uh, the study of the biomechanics, of the anatomical movement, uh, as kinesiology, as sports medicine type of type of thing as far as coaching is concerned. Technically, if you want to go that route and come out as a coach, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can do as I did, work as an athlete in it, learn as much as you can, read. Don't be afraid to ask a question. Talk to all kinds of coaches, review film, ask. Because if you don't ask, you won't know. Practice, 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 and come out as an athlete yourself and then further it that way. That's the way I went. There are a lot of people that don't make it to Olympic Games. I'm one of them. Uh, there are a lot of people who don't become professional athletes. Uh, but if you have a passion and a desire to be a coach or a trainer or a fitness expert, you can do that. You can pretty much do anything you want to do, all right? But say, for instance, you don't make it to the Olympic Games. I mean, that's not the end of the world. Say, for instance, your career ends at, uh, in high school and you still have the passion to coach. You can do that, okay? Or you want to manage athletes. You can do that. And if that's what you want, you work at it. My name is Jackie McMullen, and I'm the pro basketball analyst for Sports Illustrated. You know, I loved sports from the time I was a little girl, and when I got to high school, I played field hockey, I played basketball, I ran track, and then I went to University of New Hampshire and played basketball there. And it really wasn't until I got to college that I realized what a huge commitment it was. You couldn't play any other sports. You couldn't even think about any other sports. You just had to play basketball year-round, work out two, three hours a day. You take my commitment and multiply it by times 20, and that's what you get with a pro basketball player. I grew up in a school where the school sports for girls were so good, but they, no one ever wrote about them, so I used to complain about it to my dad all the time. And he said, well, don't complain to me. Call up the paper and ask them why they don't cover girls' sports. So I called up the sports editor there and said, you know, we've got a lot of good things going on here with a lot of good girls. And he said, hey, I'd love to cover them, but I'm shorthanded. What are you doing? Why don't you cover them? So my first uh, real sports assignments were covering my own teams. When I worked at the Boston Globe, I covered everything. I covered crew races on Saturday mornings at 7.30 at the Charles River. I covered the Boston Red Sox and when I was in Shea Stadium when the ball went through Bill Buckner's legs. But now with Sports Illustrated, I'm doing just pro basketball. And that's been kind of exciting for me because it's really been the sport I love the most and what I've been most comfortable covering. I started playing my junior year of high school and just became addicted to it and haven't really stopped playing since. I'm 35 years old. I still play two days a week with the guys down at an outdoor park. And I shouldn't be. I've dislocated every finger on my hand, but I love it. I can't stop playing. I've never found anything else that I find is enjoyable. The most interesting assignment I had with Sports Illustrated was a, was a young person no one's ever heard of, a young guy named Eric Gingold, who was seven foot four and only played one college basketball season at Williams College Division III. And he's trying to make the NBA now. And I went down there and watched some of his private workouts. And this is a kid who actually has some skills. And the big question was, would anybody draft him? And nobody did. He, he went through two rounds without anybody touching, but he has been invited to the Toronto Raptors camp. And I'm just curious to see where his career is going to go. I think for any young kid today that wants to be a sports writer, um, you should go to your school paper if you have one. Go to your local paper and offer to cover some of the high school teams. Most of these local papers are short-handed and you won't make a lot of money, but they'll be glad to have you there. Also, I would suggest to any young person today, read as much as you can and write as much as you can because there's no shortcut for those two things. That's how you become a writer and how you develop your own style and your own voice. And if you think what I do is cool, check this out. My name is Warner Scott. I'm the president of Advantage Market Group, a sports marketing firm based in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I played sports in high school uh, because, quite frankly, I realized that sports was going to be my ticket to uh, getting a college education, and that was baseball. Uh, quite frankly, uh, once I became a junior and I was the winningest pitcher on, on the team, uh, moving from JB to varsity probably became the most 
defining moment of my sports career because the coaches said, you might be the winningest pitcher, but you don't have enough smoke to get to the varsity and be successful. I said, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Uh, I had, fortunately, had a friend that was playing tennis. He says, why don't you come practice with me? And when I touched that tennis racket, it was like a magic wand and uh, picked it up. Within a period of a year, I was undefeated, and everybody thought I could play. And quite frankly, all I had was a great serve and a strong forehand and a competitive spirit to be the best that I can be. And most importantly, was able to put myself through school because I, I, I knew my parents weren't going to be able to put me through school. But what sports marketing does for an athlete is it really gives him a chance or her a chance uh, to not only be a privileged gladiator, but become a respected Caesar. What does that mean? That means that you're able to take the personality, you're able to take the dynamics of the person themselves, okay, and create an image that the marketplace, uh, people out there say, wow, I get it. Well, I, what I'd say for kids that want to get into sports marketing is follow your dream, uh, follow your own uh, interests, and if you're participating in sports already, uh, get to know what it's all about in terms of competition and being the best that you can be. Also get out there to the library so that you can uh, start to research some things on sports marketing. Uh, start to read the Sports Illustrated and other trade magazines so that you get a, a sense of what sports is all about. And as soon as you can get yourself in a position where you can volunteer your services uh, for an event or, or for charity or actually work as an intern for a company, go for it because you can do it. Welcome to my edit room. I'm Greg Stump and I make ski movies. This is where we put together all this uh, goofy stuff. Ski movies, sports movies, commercials, whatever. As a kid, I was a competitive skier back in New England, and uh, I won the national championship when I was about 17 or 18 years old, and I kept bugging this guy named Dick Barrymore, who uh, was making really cool ski movies at the time for K2. I just kept bugging him after I won the national, saying that I wanted to ski for him, just like kids bug me today. It's kind of funny. And uh, he was really nice and said, sure, come on out to Sun Valley, get a sponsor, come on out here, and we'll give it a go. All Dick Barrymore was doing was skiing around the backpack and taking this little wind-up camera out of his backpack and taking pictures of me and then putting it to kind of mediocre music. And I was working as a disc jockey at the time, so I thought, well, I can do that. Well, let's see. In the last year, we visited, visited Siberia. We went to uh, Chile. I've been to New Zealand, Australia, uh, Hawaii, Tahiti, everywhere in the United States most places in Canada. I um, skied most of the good places in the French Alps, Chamonix, Courchevel, those kind of places are just fantastic because they have great skiing, huge mountains, and awesome food. I liked skiing for the camera, but I, you know, I realized that I wasn't, uh, I wasn't as good as these people that I really liked filming, you know, people like Scott Schmidt and Craig Kelly and, you know, those kind of world-class skiers. The number one rule to uh, ski and snowboard movie making is you have to film people that are really, really good. And, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm probably better than the average person, but I'm, I'm nowhere near as good as uh, the people that we like to film. If anybody that wants to get into ski or snowboard movies, I say get your home video camera and just dive in the pool. Go out there and start shooting and uh, go make your movie. You can shoot all day with your buddies. The cost is, you know, a, a $10 tape. Start watching it with your buddies and everybody will learn so quick you won't believe it. Hey, that wraps up another edition of PETV. What'd you think? I think we learned some awesome ways for non-professional athletes to remain involved in sports. Not only remain involved in sports, but build successful careers. So learn as much as you can about sports, games, and activities that surround you. That's right. It's important knowledge that you'll carry the rest of your life. And hey, being in good physical condition is a necessity in life, no matter where you go from here. And hey, you don't want to be like Mr. Catch Potato. Find something you like to do and just do it. Get involved. Which reminds me, I think we need to work out. Yeah, yep, we do. All right, so we're going to go work out, and we'll see you next time right here on... PETV!